Hey there, do you guys like literature? Well, if you do, let me introduce you to an esoteric programming language in which you need to write code as though it is a play of Shakespeare. Let me introduce you to the programming language Shakespeare. Alright, let's get into it. Let's start first by looking at the programming language website and then we will progress to actually writing some code. Alright, so you can get a copy of Shakespeare language from shakespearelang.com. I'll put the link in the description below uh, so you can get a copy of this uh, fantastic programming language. Um, so what exactly is the Shakespeare programming language? Well. It's a language in which your source code looks like a William Shakespeare play. The programming language was designed by Carl Weiberg and John Aslan. I'm sorry if I made a mess of the name. Um, I don't quite know how to pronounce it. Um, so they made this programming language one day and it's a bit of a joke language, but it's kind of cool anyway. You can't use it in a real production environment, of course, but the, the syntax looks quite cool. So this fine individual here, Carl Weiberg, he created the programming language and uh, he wrote the uh, reference specification, which is on the internet. And a few, a few other people took that specification and they made it into an actual programming language. So I'm going to be using the Python version of the language. I believe originally uh, it was written to be uh, compiled to C, which was then compiled by the C compiler. But I'm going to be using Python for this demonstration. Uh, it's pretty much the same since the language is pretty much a an esoteric joke language. So you know, it's not going to be any different. So if we go down, um, the way to use it in Python is basically just install the package Shakespeare Lang. Um, in Python, uh, just just uh, pip install it, and then you can you can run it. So I've already done that on my machine. Um, so let's get into it. Okay. So what you can see on my screen at the moment is that I've Visual Studio Code open with a sample of a program that outputs hi. Now this is the typical hello world program. And I'll try to explain a bit about how Shakespeare works. It, it's kind of funny, so I'm, I, I, I might make mistakes along the way, but just bear with me. Trust me, it is an actual programming language, okay? So how, how the language works is, is, is really complicated, okay? <laughs> I'll try my best. So the beginning of the, of the program, up here, uh, you can just write anything you want. This is like the name of the program, and this is like a comment. Then you can declare variables. In this case, Hamlet, a literary storage device. Well, this is a variable called Hamlet. It's an integer. Juliet, an orator. Yep, this is a variable and it's an integer. This is how you declare it. Then we go into act one, scene one. Acts and scenes are to set up the program. So you have act one in the beginning, then you have scene one. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the name of the act and the scene is. It's just to set up the program. Okay, then we go enter Hamlet and Juliet. This line basically loads Hamlet and Juliet as stacks so that we can manipulate the variables. So what happens is that this programming language assumes there's a stage. When you put enter Hamlet and Juliet, the two variables, they go onto the stage. And then all the subsequent code is a conversation between the two variables on the stage. So Juliet will speak to Hamlet and Hamlet will speak back to Juliet, okay? So the first line of code is Hamlet. Oh, uh, it's Juliet. Thou art <laughs> the sum of an amazing, healthy, honest, noble, peaceful, fine lord, and a fine and a lovely, sweet, golden summer's day. Speak your mind. <laughs> okay, now this is where it gets really complicated. What happens is that Juliet is actually a variable, which is a number. Okay, so it starts from, I believe it starts from one. Then as the words go into the interpreter, based on whether it's positive or negative, based on the table, they either do plus one or minus one. At the very end of this sentence over here, speak your mind, 
This means output that variable, okay, as an ASCII character. So this long sentence here basically derives a number that when output as an ASCII is a H. Okay, let's read the next line. Thou art the sum of thyself and a king. Speak your mind. Basically, it's doing the same thing as above, but this ends up with a number that becomes an I. So let's run this program. And then you have X unt over here. This just means end. Okay, so let's run the program. So I've already put the, um, the command in here. So basically, I've installed Shakespeare um, via Python. So I've just done pip global Shakespeare. So Shakespeare run, and I'm going to put in this program, hi, SPL. It's going to process. There we are. Hi, H-I. And that, in a nutshell, is how the basics of Shakespeare works. Okay, so that's how we got hi. So let's try a more, um, a longer sample, which is a full hello world. Okay, so the program is going to be insanely long, but trust me, all it does is make hello world. So it starts with a preface on the top, which is the name of the program. It declares four variables, Romeo, Juliet, Ophelia, and Hamlet. And you have act one, scene one. Then uh, Hamlet and Romeo get onto the stage. Okay, and this is where it goes totally bonkers. Hamlet, you lying, stupid, fatherless... <laughs> Okay, all, all this line is doing is setting up the variable for Hamlet. That's all it's doing. Speak your mind. So it's going to write out the, um, the um, number in, um, in ASCII. Same thing as this. Speak your mind. Same thing as this. Speak your mind. And then finally, at the very end, it's just going to say, speak your mind. So H, E, L. And because L is on the stack, it's going to be L. Then exit Romeo means uh, Romeo gets out of there. Then in scene two, which is just setting up scene two, enter Juliet. Hamlet is still on the stage. So Hamlet can speak. So he speaks, thou art as sweet as the sum of the sum of Romeo and his horse. <laughs> speak your mind. So same thing, it's just, it's just setting up the variable in Hamlet and speak thy mind. It, it's going to output uh, the value. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to write O. And then after that, Juliet gets off the stage. Okay, I'm going to go down. It's just basically going to do the same thing. Praising Ophelia. Ophelia gets onto the stage. Same thing. Hamlet speaks. Speak your mind. It's going to get the next character. And then the next character. And then Axon, Ophelia and Hamlet. What happens here is uh, Ophelia and Hamlet, they get off the stage. That's what it means. Okay, let's move down. Um, it's the same thing for Act 2. It's just setting up variables over here. Speak your mind. And then for Scene 3, it's doing the same thing. So now if I run this program over here, you're going to just all that, all that code does is hello world. That's all it does. <laughs> all right. So that was hello world in Shakespeare. Okay. So that programming language was kind of weird that you needed to write so much code, so verbose, just to get hello world. Um, there was other syntax in there to read input. There was syntax in there for if statements and while loops, but I could not get into it. It was so verbose and so difficult. I just thought, you know what? Just showing hello world was fine. Um, it showed nearly everything of what the Shakespeare language is meant to be. Yep. So I will give this language a 5 out of 5. I think it's a super awesome language, but uh, you, you can't use it in production. Yep. You, you just can't. This, this kind of joke languages, they, they don't make it anywhere. Anyway, if you liked uh, esoteric languages like this, uh, let me know in the comments below. Definitely subscribe if you can. I mean, it doesn't harm to subscribe. If you press subscribe, don't like it later, you can always unsubscribe. It's up to you. Definitely click that bell icon to be notified of new videos. It helps me. It helps you as well. I put a new video, you know about it. So definitely do that. Give me a comment in the um, comments below. Tell me what you think of this language. I think it's an amazing language. Definitely give a shout out to the authors of the language. Give it a go. Give it a try. This is one of the simpler languages. And until next time, I'm High Voice signing out.